Hey everybody, it's Sully Man. Uh, hopefully the voice isn't too awkward uh, sounding. I'm kind of getting over a cold. Uh, so today we're going to work on um, watercolor textures. and I'm going to apply it to some text. I'm going to show you how to create the watercolor texture. Um, and then uh, turn it into a symbol and then we can paint it on uh, to the text and really kind of uh, create a pretty cool look. Uh, I'll also have this as a template that you can purchase for a couple bucks in the Pixel Mosh Pit store. And remember that stuff goes a long way um, in helping uh, create these videos. So let's get started. So I got a layer open, uh, a document, it's an RGB document. Um, and what I'm going to do is uh, start with the Google search that I did. And here's the image that I'm going to be grabbing. I did a watercolor search. Um, I actually have the size set to large. It's labeled for reuse. So you, you can find some of the stuff that where you'll be able to reuse it yourself. Um, the textures that I created in the pack um, I made myself so but uh, for the tutorial purposes we're gonna go ahead and use this one I'm gonna hit copy image head over to Illustrator and then control V to paste in or go to edit and paste uh, I'm gonna size this down that's a 14 by 16 inch um, document size there so you can imagine how big that is uh, so I'm gonna resize it down I'm gonna go to object rasterize just to rasterize and get things smooth I'm actually going to um, knock it into grayscale. I'm going to make sure it's set to high. Uh, background, I'm not worrying about if it's white or transparent. It's uh, a bitmap image anyway, so there's not going to be any transparency. So let's hit uh, OK. So once that's finished, um, we now have it nice and rasterized. Now I'm going to head over to Live Trace. Now I'm going to turn the background off so you can see the bitmap. So, you know, there's no transparency involved. So I'm going to click on it. I'm going to head over to Live Trace. Um, the mode I'm going to set to black and white. My threshold I'm going to want to bump up. Um, let's see here. Actually, let's do grayscale. I'm sorry. Uh, and for the grays, I'm going to I'm going to probably knock that up to let's say around 60. Paths I'm going to knock up because we want to keep some of this detail, the texture from the paper and what have you. So we definitely want to keep that. I'm going to have that at about 75. Corners 75. Noise I'm going to go down to one so I can. Uh, you know, keep a lot of the original stuff in there. Let's let's get that to about 10. Uh, down here, snap curves to lines, and then I'm also going to ignore white. So any white will be ignored. Uh, I'm going to hit preview to kind of show you guys what what's going to happen. Illustrator is going to give me a warning dialog box. Tracing may proceed slowly because the image is large. So depending on your system, it might take some time. Uh, I have a pretty moderate average system, um, so you know I'm going to not take heed to the warning and just hit, hit OK. Um, it will take a moment. Um, again, my system's about 8 gigs of RAM, so we're not. I'm not working with a whole lot. I'm sure you guys are probably around the same range, so don't worry too much. That's why I do the initial, the initial resize and raster um, of the image. So let's uh, wait for this to finish. Uh, and that's a pretty good result. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm not hating that too much. So uh, to solidify that decision, I'm going to hit expand. And now it has been vectorized. So I'm going to turn the uh, background back on. If you want to know how to do that, that's control shift D to toggle that off and on. Uh, so with that um, texture ready, I'm going to go ahead and size that down. Um, that's, that's pretty good there. I know my text is going to be fairly large. So um, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that's all selected. I'm going to group it head over to my symbols and you'll notice here um, this was the initial test I'll delete that but um, these are the ones I've already created um, through actually you know water painting some strokes myself and uh, and some salt as well and I'll show you that as we get further in the tutorial so what I'm gonna do is with this new live traced object uh, I'm gonna go ahead and drag and drop it into my symbols panel I'm gonna name it water color 5 um, you can leave it a movie clip or graphic, not a big deal. Uh, I'm just going to label it as graphic. You can reorganize if you want, so I'm going to drag it with all my watercolor brushes there. Um, now, we're still on the artboard. I'm going to go ahead and delete that, but you'll see that that's still there. Um, with it still there, I'm going to go ahead and double-click into it so I can go into the symbol editor mode. I'm going to select everything. I'm going to head over to my transparency panel. Uh, I'm going to uh, knock this into multiply. Multiply is going to make anything that's white within this um, invisible or not visible. 
and leave only the blacks. I'm also going to knock down its opacity, let's say about 40%. Um, and you'll see that kind of affects everything too. Uh, and then I'm going to either double click or hit this arrow to back out of symbol editing mode. So now that I'm out of that, uh, let's get started. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to type some text down and I'm going to put the faculty for no reason. I'm going to go ahead and change this up. Um, actually, I need to have it lowercase. And then this, I'm going to leave all uppercase. I'm going to, um, this font, by the way, is on Behance. I believe it's for free. I forget the user's name. It's called Streetwear. Great font. Go ahead and uh, support him by uh, heading on over there and, uh, you know, doing a little search for Streetwear font. Uh, with this font, I'm just going to do a college, um, just a standard kind of college font. Hit that. Uh, and that's cool. I'm going to go ahead and turn my text into curves. Uh, the shortcut is Control shift o So that's now all curves. I'm going to ungroup them so I can move them around. I'm going to take the the and group it. And faculty, and I'll group that. Um, I'm going to size these guys up. I'm going to move a little closer. The size works quick. Yeah, let's bump them up about that big. I'm going to take the and get that in the place that I want it. Let's just put it about here. Um, now, with watercolor, um, you'll notice, let's head over to this image, um, you know, towards the edge there always tends to be, you can see this was multiple strokes, and over here it'll be dark, there's like almost a dark ring around the edges that, you know, um, fades off, so that's kind of some, something we want to take care of um, in the beginning, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this layer, I'm going to lock the bottom one. Um, now what I'm going to do is, with this one, uh, you can see faculty is kind of, um, when I uh, expanded it into curves, you can see the individual lettering. I'm going to go ahead to Pathfinder, and I'm going to unite those. Um, I'm also going to now select everything, and you can see the, the fill is uh, black. I'm going to change it all to white. I'm going to head over to Effect, Stylize, Inner Glow. Now, um, I've already kind of ran through this tutorial before, so everything's kind of set. So normally this is set to screen. I want to change the blending mode to normal. Make sure my color's black. We'll hit OK on that. Uh, the opacity I changed from its default, I went to 80%. Um, and we're going to hit Preview. So that's pretty good. And you'll see that it's, um, the object-wide, it's going to uh, expand that. So let's, let's hit the blur to about 5% and see what we have. Uh, still not happy with that. Let's try 9%. Uh, that's pretty good. So you're you're seeing that the it's thinner letters. So let's go ahead and back out of that real fast. Let's have just faculty selected and then apply our um, inner glow to that. So let's um, bump it back to the initial. So I'm going to go uh, 0.2 inches for faculty. Let's see what that looks like. That's a little too large. Let's maybe 0.1. Let's see what that looks like. Let's do 0.15 so we can get half in between what that was. Eh, it's still a little too large for my taste point 12. That's pretty good. I like that. So we'll hit OK on that one. And for the, we'll do the same thing. Effect, Stylize, Inner Glow. Um, now it's got that the faculty default set. So let's hit Preview. That's obviously too large. So let's go to point zero 0.08. I like that. So we'll hit OK on that. So that portion's done. Now you'll notice we can't see without toggling uh, the black background. Um, we we toggle the visibility on this on this layer. So let's go ahead and select all of that. We're going to go to transparency panel and change its blending mode from normal to multiply. And remember, multiply only allows the black values to be visible. Okay, now with that set to multiply, you're not going to actually see uh, it, it actually right now because it's black a black um, inner glow on top of black. So it's just not going to be visible. You can toggle the uh, bottom layer off and on, and you'll see that it's still there. So uh, I'm going to lock that, and I'm, I'm now going to go head back into my first layer and select faculty again, head over to the Pathfinder, and I'm going to go ahead and unite that as well. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select everything. I'm going to go ahead and group them, and I'm also going to hit Control-C to copy. Because I'm going to apply a mask to this, but I also want this to be visible. 
So now that it's grouped, I'm going to hit Make Mask, and you'll see that it's created the mask. Let's go ahead and click on the mask thumbnail to activate it. And then I'm going to also head over to Edit, Object, Paste in Place. Now we've pasted the exact same artwork into the mask, but it's black, so it's no longer visible. Let's make it white. And you'll see now that it's white, and you can see it reflect in the thumbnail, it's now made that black object visible. Um, because in a mask, white equals visibility, where black equals invisibility. Um, you can think of it as cutting and erasing, or uh, erasing or adding. I'm sorry. So, um, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and deselect the object. And now that we have our watercolor texture, um, you know, this, this kit will come um, with other different textures that you can kind of slap in. But with the one that we made, let's make sure that's selected. Head over to our sprayer tool, and then we can just, just start spraying that texture in. So, depending on the um, detail in, in the actual artwork, it might take a second or two to kind of get that in. But uh, you can see... Now, the more I spray on, the more I'm erasing. But it also has that nice texture to it. So if we zoom in, you'll see what I'm talking about. And that's kind of what watercolor looks like. You know, it's that nice, faint, um, faded look. And it shows the kind of watercolor uh, paper below it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and deselect that now and grab my sprayer tool again. And now with salt, when you're watercolor painting, uh, salt kind of deflects the pigment in the watercolor. So let's go ahead and uh, apply some of that to that. So I'm going to kind of sprinkle this in different areas. That's kind of some of the larger salt dots. Let's add some small ones as well. Different, different areas. Let's kind of sprinkle that in here and there. And then maybe let's, uh, we'll deselect off that one, and let's, whoops, select our sprayer tool again, and maybe slap in a, a few strokes of different watercolor texture. See what that does as well. Let's add some in over there. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I like that. So, now, uh, that's, that's pretty much it. So, you know, if you want to kind of edit anything else, uh, just, you know, head into your artwork or the mask to make the changes. Uh, if you want to tweak any of the sizing and what have you, make sure that you're out of the mask when you do that. So you literally can go in, let's say that salt, the initial salt that we added, say we wanted to size that up, double click, grab that salt, bump it up in size, double click to exit, and it will update live into the artwork. And we'll see those, so you can see those dots are much larger now. Uh, let's go ahead and turn the background off, toggle the um, transparency, and you'll see that you know there's there's actually transparency to that object as well um, now you can also remove the um, that little glow um, and you'll see even further how transparent it is but it actually knocks out that little faint uh, black f uh, black fading in towards the center uh, look so if you don't like that you can you can remove that as well you know by just not applying the inner stroke to it so uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So I hope you guys took something from that today uh, on how to create a watercolor texture and then turn it into a um, something that you can actually paint with the um, symbol sprayer tool. Uh, so like I said, I'm going to go ahead and host this template for a couple bucks in the Pixel Mosh Pit store. So any purchase goes a long way. Uh, I post kind of sporadically because I honestly can't justify the time to you know do this consistently every week. You know, given that the funding was there, I'd be able to do that. Uh, until that happens, um, you know, I kind of have to post at random. So if you do want to see that in the future, any support uh, goes a long way because I'll see that you guys kind of really want that to happen. Um, with that being said, uh, you know, if you can't make the purchase, can't afford to do that for a couple bucks, uh, likes, commenting, shares, and subscribing definitely goes a long way too as well. So I hope you guys took something from this today, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks. Sometimes you'll, you'll want to be urged to, um, uh, like on this style, just use a...